Hi, I'm Corey Geiger, joined by Neil Riddell. Really historic day here at Penn State. The introduction of Bill O'Brien as the new football coach, Neil. And, uh, boy, he did a tremendous job, did he not? Hit a, hit a really a home run in his first uh, public appearance. You know, I expected him to be good because he's, he was not a household name, so you had to figure that he, had, that he was going to be impressive. I'm sure he impressed the committee in his interview along the way, but... Uh, he exceeded my expectations. I, I thought he met uh, the situation that he's in pretty head on with his opening remarks. You know, crafted a letter to the whole Penn State football family, all the lettermen uh, of inclusion and being in this together. And I, I thought he was, uh, he impressed me. Boy, he really uh, came across very well, answered a lot of questions right off the bat. He's a straightforward guy. You know, he's kind of a no nonsense, hard nosed football guy with a lot of integrity, everyone who knows him says. And uh, you, we don't know exactly what uh, kind of football coach he'll be yet, but he did answer a lot of very specific things today, starting with. Larry Johnson. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it, it's interesting when you get in a press conference because you have a lot of media there that, you know, one of the rules of the media is you don't cheer, you don't boo in the press box and whatnot. But there were a lot of university supporters here also. And, it's, and of course, Bill O'Brien was greeted with applause. But when he announced that he's retaining Larry Johnson, uh, that got like a, a big roar. Uh, from the people there. And Larry Johnson was there, very grateful, and I think that's his first first good call. Penn State uh, issued a, a press release during the, uh, put out a piece of paper during, uh, right after O'Brien finished talking with the contract highlights, and it said $950,000 base pay, and then it mentioned extra pay for TV, radio, Nike, uh, and, but all we saw really on in that initial one was $950,000, which seemed very, very low for this type of job. Then a few minutes later, they put out another release saying he'll get a million dollars a year extra for the radio TV, uh, $350,000 a year extra from Nike. So a $2.3 million that he'll get, and then he can get an additional $200,000 in, uh, in extra incentives if possible. But a $2.3 million contract for five years? It seems, seems a little bit about right. Ira Lubert did tell me, by the way, quote, that was a little less than what Joe Paterno made. Yeah, I mean, it's always been a place that is not known for paying top dollar. I mean, there's a lot of other coaches in the country they're going to be making. You'll see they're making more uh, than it made more than Joe. But and it'll probably be in, the, I'm sure, the lower tier of the Big Ten. But uh, I think they'll reward as, uh, as uh, warranted as they go forward. Uh, 2.3 seems about uh, reasonable to me. Uh, you know, maybe if they could have gotten Urban Meyer and when those negotiations were apparently going on a while ago, maybe they would have paid more for him. Who knows? O'Brien will meet with the team tomorrow at 5 o'clock or Sunday at 5 o'clock, depending on you're watching this, and plans to have a staff in place he said within the next two or three days. So a very, very quick. He must have some people in mind that he's probably been talking to already. Yeah, and a couple of names have come out. Uh, the Tennessee T uh, Titans offensive coach, uh, Charles London, I think his name is. He's another guy that at least there's been some speculation. I thought it was interesting that he said he plans to call the plays. Mm -hmm. For the uh, first year. For at least for the first year. He's obviously calling the plays in New England, and offensive guys don't give up that uh, you know, too willingly, but he did clarify that. I'm very, very much looking forward to seeing him uh, as an offensive coach. And I want to clarify because during the press conference afterward, I was trying to ask him what kind of uh, what kind of uh, coach he's become, a uh, better offensive coach while he's been with the Patriots for the past few years. Because if you look at his numbers at Georgia Tech as an offensive coordinator and at Duke as an offensive coordinator, they weren't great, but I have to believe that he's become a much better offensive mind over the last few years working with Tom Brady. He's the offensive coordinator. I'm very excited to see what he can do with this Penn State offense. Yeah, and, and let's face it, everybody who's been following Penn State for a long time knows that Joe's philosophy was – <clears throat> excuse me, started with defense, special teams. Don't beat yourself on offense for the most part unless he's had a dominating quarterback. Excuse me. Uh, when he's had Kerry Collins and a great line, it's been different. But by and large, they've not put the emphasis on, on offense or the quarterback. He did come out and address the fact that I, uh, he didn't say LeVar Arrington or Brandon Short, but clearly some Penn State alums not happy with his hire initially. Arrington has since backtracked a little bit and apologized, but he sounded as if he understands that, that uh, the hire might be met with a little bit of resistance at first, and he's willing to meet that and unify the Penn State football family. Yeah, he did, and I thought you know, he, he got into that before he even took any questions. So he knew that that was obviously a huge issue, uh, you know, before, uh, and, and he said that he had 
really crafted his opening remarks for the last couple days, and you could tell that a lot of them were thought out. I was, uh, I just was overall very, very impressed with the guy, and uh, you know, I know that you know, there's obviously they've been through trauma here, and Joe uh, was a casualty, and there's a lot of very strong feelings about how everything went down. Uh, but I think this guy will be, uh, you know deserves a fresh start. He had nothing to do with anything, and I think that he'll get that. He absolutely deserves a chance. Uh, the search committee took a lot of criticism. Dave Joyner's taken a lot of criticism. Dave Joyner told us this was his first choice, that O'Brien is the only person that they offered a contract to. I asked Dave, do you really, you know, that's going to be hard for some people to buy, but he said, hey, people can believe what they want. Uh, he said this was their first choice. Do you believe that? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think that maybe... <laughs> You know, the, the whole dancing process, you know, say you call Mike Munchak and you say, are you interested in the job? And he says, no. Well, then you can say, well, he was our first choice. Uh, this guy was our first, Bill O'Brien was the first choice. We never offered the job to anybody else. So I, I really don't know. It seemed like, uh, obviously, they were very deliberate in the process. And one last thing, he did say, kind of as he was leaving the room, one of the last questions, changing the uniforms, he said, quote, we're not changing the uniform, right. so there's some not going to be any. Yeah, no some names people on the have back. asked that. He said he's always, when he grew up, he liked watching Penn State. He liked the uniforms, he liked playing helmets. A lot of respect for Joe Paterno. He yeah. mentioned Joe uh, today as well. Uh, but uh, clearly, he, hit a home run, I thought, Neil. Yeah, and Joe uh, issued a statement last night, which I thought was classy. And uh, O'Brien today said he looks forward to meeting him. Yep, should be uh, very interesting to see. Uh, looks like a guy that... Uh, can come in here and rejuvenate some things. You, you can only hope so because clearly the Penn State football program, Penn State University, ha has been damaged to a large degree over the past two months. Yeah, uh, and they took a step. Uh, I think you know Penn State has a great past, and I think today it took a step toward uh, establishing a future. Good. Well said. All right, for Neil Rennell, I'm Corey Geiger. Thanks for tuning in.